it's the NFL on EA Sports. And we'll see the lefty, Tua Tonga Valoa. He's going to have to air it out plenty this week. It's the Broncos and the Chargers coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us at the foot of the Rockies just west of downtown Denver in Power Field at Mile High. And hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, we look at this Bronco team. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Chargers, they were losers their last time out. They're going to try to get back in the win column, but obviously they're going to have to do that in a hostile environment. And off we go from Denver. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They will be led out by the six-foot lefty from Alabama. It's Tua Tonga Vailoa. You want to talk about a driven player partner? This guy is absolutely that person. He doesn't just have goals in this game. He wants to be remembered among the best to play the position, and he treats every game as an audition for that. It's a lofty goal to set for yourself, but we've seen his drive lead to some impressive games from him. Perhaps another one is in store today. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Second down and six now from the 26. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. Nick Bosa credit him with a sack as he buries him for a loss of 10. They were able to win last week despite him being sacked four times. They might need to tighten the reins a little bit or this one may not end in another victory. You're right about that. They can't count on just winning the game no matter what happens. They can't let the accumulation of hits and harassment in the pocket get to their quarterback. Got to stop that. Give him clean lanes to throw the football in order to have a better chance to win again this week. Play action, now it's Tua, rolling to his left. So no sack, he gets back to the line of scrimmage, but it'll still bring up a fourth down. But one of the things we talked about coming into this was that we were never going to question the fight that he's going to have for all four quarters of a game. But ideally, you want him fighting for big plays and first downs early, not fighting just to get back to the line of scrimmage, as we saw right there. That'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. So here's the Charger offense making their way out. They'll be led out by their quarterback, the guy out of California, the former Cal Bear, Jared Goff. And at one point, the ascension of Jared Goff was really, really strong. Back-to-back -back Pro Bowls, took his team to the Super Bowl and came really within one quarter of winning it. But since that time... He's had bouts of inconsistency, and that's been the struggle for him as he tries to get back to the form he showed earlier in his career. A first run now for Kyron Williams. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. But you look at this Bronco defense. Well, they were very strong in that victory from a week ago. I would have loved to have been in their meetings this week and hear that grizzled old defensive coordinator talk about, well, you did okay, guys. We did our... Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. Some guys just have a knack for creating turnovers. He's got a little bit of that going. He forced a fumble last week, another one there. And it just drives teams crazy because they realize that certain guys, as you said, have that knack, and they're trying to keep them away from the action, away from the ball. But the best ones have that overwhelming desire, that overwhelming need to get to the football and make it happen, and that he does. In motion right is Pittman. Now two are going to fake the jet sweep and the handoff as he'll drop the throw. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. Second and ten. Tua sets up to pass it. That's pulled in by Brooks. 
And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. Going to the air, Tonga Bailoa. Throw left side, taken in by Washington. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and it's second down. They'll run here, the former Longhorn with it. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Nick Bosa, now two sacks for him already here in this first quarter of play. So first down went the wrong direction. They're at the 13-yard line here, second and goal. Two are going to throw. Throw left side, take it in by Pittman. And he's got this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. Now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. Looking to pass to him. Got a man and he hits him in stride. They wind up with six on the hook up there, but it's not enough. Fourth and goal. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. Sly able to put this one through. And the Broncos, the first to grace the scoreboard. It's three zip. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Chargers get set to go here for their second drive. And they are back down to 500 following the loss last week. Consistency has been a real issue for them so far. Brandon, you almost don't know what team is going to show up every week. I mean, there's no consistency with this ball club at all. And if we feel that way, I know it frustrates the coaching staff. And it also has to frustrate the key leaders in the locker room. They got to figure out how to get coordinated. Golf. Got a man. That's IU. He's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Here's third and a few inches. Here's Goff. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Chargers first down, as that'll be a pickup of about five as they convert on third and inches. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. Second down at six now from the 42. They run it again with Williams. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. But you look at this Bronco defense, and they find themselves just outside the top 10 in the league against the pass, currently bringing up the number 11 spot. So I'm prepping for this game. I kept asking myself the question, what's keeping this group from being top 10 in the league against the pass? And too many mistakes, especially little mistakes. And those add up into big mistakes, Big mistakes add up into points against you. Show a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 35-yard line. Play action. It's gone. That is caught. It's Williams. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll try and run. This is Williams. He gets them a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. If you're going to keep these guys out of the end zone, you've got to be able to commit to stopping the run. And that's a nice job there, getting the safeties involved in run support. Gone. 
He finds his receiver, Williams, for a Charger touchdown. Mike Williams, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Chargers have answered that early field goal to take a first quarter lead. And down near the goal line here, they're able to throw it in. And the key word, quick. Quick hitter out of his hands fast, into the receiver's hands even faster. Jake Moody now for the point after. He's got it. They'll see that opening drive field goal and raise it a touchdown, and that makes it 7-3. to three. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And in the end, it was Mike Williams who capped the drive with a touchdown reception. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. And coming out now, the Broncos. And they are trying to create some separation within the division. And look, CD, I know that this is still the first half of the season, but this is a big matchup no matter where it falls because these are the top two teams right now in that division. And if you can build a bit of a cushion as you head towards the second part of the season, that allows you to survive the expected injuries, potential upset losses, all of those things, and still be in good shape. It'll be a gain of just a yard, and it's second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. He'll get this one to Pittman. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll bring us to a third and four. That's the gain of five. Brings up third and four. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga Bailoa. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have the Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? Yeah, they should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not easy. Because <laughs> because when they when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. Second quarter about to begin from Denver. It's the Broncos in possession of the football as they've got it with a first and 10. And they'll send the slot in motion left. On play action, here's Tua. And that's going to be incomplete. The Broncos in a very solid form run here in the early part of the year. And they've come in on a nice run of recent form. Four wins out of five. And I thought that they played pretty well last week. Their execution, their discipline, their resilience, all on display in that victory. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. The offense on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and 11. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 37. A third down gain of 19. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. And his throw is incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. That's into the hands of 2-2 Atwell. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. It's his first catch, and it'll be good for 15 and a first down. Now Tua. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. They'll run straight ahead with Brooks. 
five yards. Now it's third and five. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Uh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. Sly able to put this one through, and they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So the margin shrinks there as they get the field goal to draw them a bit closer here in this second quarter. Yeah, nice snap, nice hole. They just want to keep this game close, so give them credit for finishing that one off with three. Cook able to escape. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Called it the 26. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. That's caught. It's Marvin Mims. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. His first catch, good for 16 and a first. Off play action. Here's Goff. Got his man. That's Luke Musgrave. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. Man coverage on the left side, so I really like the design of this play because they opened up the field and brought their tight end the other way on a crossing route. That's a lot of ground to cover if you're a defender. I've been there before, unable to stay with his man there. Now it's gone. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. It sort of looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. They'll get this into the hands of Ayu. And able to get this down inside the 15 to either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. Third down and one. Now gone. And he's wrapped up. Taken down. Back at the 25. Brought down by multiple defenders. And it's a loss of 12. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense. So he kept going backwards. Hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Jake Moody now on for the field goal. Right hash mark of 42-yard attempt. And his kick is good. And they bump the lead up to four now at 10-6. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. Denver's offense now set to go. Now they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach has talked with his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe someday will press it a little bit. This might be the case. Nick Bosa able to get in there yet again. That's already three sacks for him here in this first half of football. Now following the sack, they'll come up here on a second down and 12. And they'll send the tight end in motion. Man open left side is Brown. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. 
Here's Tonga Vailoa to throw. And he is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. A strong eight yards will keep this drive rolling. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Brings up second and ten. Tua sets up to pass it. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. Off of play action. Tongue of Iloa. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Multiple players getting home there for an eight-yard loss. That's number four, sack number four. They had four last week, so he's he's been down on the ground a lot. Partner, they say the eye in the sky does not lie, and that's indeed the case because they watched the game tape from the previous week, incorporated into their own defensive scheme, and continued to get after this quarterback. And now this defense will be searching for sack number five. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, well, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. The Chargers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time it's third and three. Now a play fake and it's gone. Man open left side. It's Williams. So no gain on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. We'll call it a 42-yard punt, three on the return. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. From midfield, here's Tua. Washington's got it. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. Looking to pass. Tua. And down he goes at the 49. A three-yard pickup. Well, backed up here. Tough spot. Needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Play action. Now it's Tua. And this pass broken up. Now the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. It's always a goal that is really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion. Force an incompletion and force another punt. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So out come the Chargers. And now with still more than a minute to go in what's been a tight game, you figure we'll try to see them move the ball downfield. And remember, they get the kickoff to start the second half, so this is a golden opportunity for them to go down there and put up a couple of sixes back-to-back. -back. What a momentum swing that would be. Yeah, you might be able to get a two-for-one without ever even giving up the football. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. To throw is gone. 
And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. Made the quick throw there outside the numbers, and you can feel the thought process. They just wanted to get in his hands and let him make a play. But how about the job they did defensively to keep him bottled up? Instead, they tackle him for a loss. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. Really in a hole here, third and 17, following the two negative plays. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. Here's Jones. A nice return that time gets 12 yards back. And they will take over first and 10. Back onto the field comes this offense led by George Kittle. He's well on his way to a 1,000-yard season, maybe on pace to just tear past that, Charles. Defensively, they need to pay a little bit more attention to him? Yeah, I think so, because remember, throwing the football, that can shred a defense quicker than anything else because as soon as the catch is made, he still has the ability to, you know, yards after catch, get downfield, gain even more, score touchdowns, all of that. This is going to be a lot of fun to watch as this progresses to see how they defend him and how he changes up his game in order to try and keep getting open. He's going to try and go deep again. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. And they're not going to go quietly into this halftime break. They know they're in for a fight, so they're trying to make every possession count. They took the big shot there, but it winds up incomplete. Out of the gun on third down. Here's Tua. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big-time spark somewhere, but it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. This is brought in at the 21. A punt of 46, a return of five. And there will be time for maybe one final play before halftime. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we have reached halftime intermission with the visiting Chargers on top. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks. A few teams starting to rise to the top as it's time to take you around the NFL here in Week 6. We'll begin with the early game across the Atlantic at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in North London, where it was the visiting Jaguar to be able to come away with the road victory. Travis Etienne accounting for all of his guys' offense there as he had both of their touchdowns. From Chicago, we head north to the home of their rivals as we check on the Packers at home in Lambeau. And they were losers in that one to the visiting Arizona Cardinals. Aiden O'Connell, excellent in the victory as his guys run their mark to 4-2 and two on the year. Finally, let's get down to the Bayou to check on the Saints at home at the Caesar Superdome. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Tampa Bay Bucks. Jerry Judy, a touchdown catch in the victory. This has certainly been a fun one to watch so far. We knew this was going to be a battle, but we have not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side could play mistake-free football the rest of the way. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Chargers getting ready to go here to start this third quarter. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. Williams going to get it again on second down. And it's a fumble. Wow. That ball is not free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. 
almost like it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Got his man. It's London. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Out of the gun. Gone. They'll find Ayuk open right side. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. It'll be a gain of five, and that will bring up second down. Now a tenth carry. Here's Williams. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. He lost two, and it brings up four. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped them, bringing up fourth down. On is the Chargers punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. And Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try to get some points. Throwing now is Chunga Bailoa. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. You get the sense that they're saying, we're not playing up to what we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. Well, this is just a continuation of what we saw in the first half. So much for the fresh start to begin the third quarter. Still off target throws, no rhythm throwing the football, and obviously no touchdown scored in this game. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Charger defensive unit making their way back out there. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Gone. Caught left side, Williams. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. From the gun on third down, gone. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he'll be tackled right on the midfield logo. 40 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Here comes third in the length of the football. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half, and that trend is continuing here. On 
is the Chargers punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Broncos coming hard and it's blocked. And that play was made coming up the middle. That wasn't a punt block from the outside, Charles. That means someone had their eyes in the wrong place, and that would be the personal protector. Look in the middle first before you scan to the side. Sometimes they get distracted and think the threat is coming off the edge. Up the middle is the one you have to care about the most because that's the quickest spot and the quickest way to the punter. Two are going to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Brown. So second and four from the 22. They'll run right here with Brooks. Try to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Third and three. Here's Tua. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have the Broncos' first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Another nice play there. They've gotten down into the red zone in no time at all. That's what this offense can do when they get on a roll. And now they're set up with a first and ten. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Brown. And the Broncos are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the run. Brooks will score. Touchdown, Broncos. Sometimes offense can get too cute down near the goal line, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here, and we get a seal here. And we run this play in the alley. And that's good work to hit the hole hard and finish in the end zone. An extra point by Sly is up and good. And that gives him a three-point lead. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. That's pretty good coverage by the kick team as he'll only be able to get this past the 15-yard line and no further. Chargers offense back onto the field. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Here's gone. Got a man. That's IU. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. It certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Goff now looking to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Throwing again is Goff. Setting up the screen for Cook. And shedding the tackle and now some room. They'll get four there out of the screen and it's second down. Boy, that was certainly well read defensively. And the key to any screenplay is space to work. And there was nothing to be found there. And they tackle him for just a short game. He'll find Williams on the slant. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. And the throw and the catch were just fine, but against zone coverage when you run a drag route, what you're hoping for is he makes the catch and makes someone miss, and they don't there. Very difficult route to run when everyone has their eyes back towards the quarterback and they're able to see the route develop. 
And he'll be taken down after a minimal pickup, and that will take us to the end of quarter number three. Three quarters in the books. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Off play action. Here's Goff. Throw right side complete to Williams. Two yards on the pick up there. And it brings up third and five now. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. From the gun, here's Goff. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Uh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. That's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up, converged on his man, and broke the play up. So with less than a minute gone by here in this fourth quarter, the field goal there gets this thing back to even. And it's setting up for a fantastic finish, isn't it, partner? It's been a well-played game, a hard-hitting game. The fans are into it. The announcers are into it. This is going to be a great fourth quarter. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Broncos are about set to go on offense. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Connects with Kittle underneath. So five yards here, five on the play. And it'll be second down. Tua sets up to pass it. And that went to the right side and incomplete. Well, as we all know, possessions are crucial in a tie game. And let's face it, I really didn't need to tell you that. You already knew it. So when he sees he's got nothing good going, an excellent decision to just send that one to the sideline. To a hit, and the ball is out. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. Offensively lucky they're able to keep the football, but now fourth down, so they'll have to boot it away. I do think, though, they're going to look at this as a positive. One, they recovered the fumble, so they retained possession. But two, being able to punt it changes field position for them. Imagine if that turnover takes place there. Now your defense has to go out to the field and try and hold. Instead, they get a little breathing room. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And out will come the offense as they take over. The offense for Los Angeles returns to the field. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. Now it's gone. Yeah, to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. And in the second half of the tie game, every decision gets magnified. And here, if he forces this ball, it could be intercepted. So that's the prudent play to just airmail it out of bounds. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Now gone. And it is caught. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So they take the flag and the yardage that comes with it. 
still first down. Now a chance to make that encroachment penalty really hurt. First and five. They'll fake the handoff. Now gone. He's got his man, London, right side. They get six on the pickup there as the drive continues. Goff throwing again. He's got this complete to Ayuk on the out route. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. 63 yards on the ground for him now as he's done that on 15 carries. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now golf. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Here's second and 10. Back to throw. Golf. Towards the middle and caught by Musgrave. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. But Brandon, we see why it's a team game there, because there's a sigh of relief that they just released defensively. If he's able to get that one away, it's likely a touchdown. But instead, that pressure from the front got to him and forced the incompletion. You're right. He had him open just a split second too late on the release. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give him the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? And able to get this out to the 25. And Denver getting set to take the field. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to bring up second down. Play action. Now it's Tua. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. Now throw right side here, going to be incomplete. You still hold your breath a little as a defense when Tua gets out of the pocket. You're worried about him scrambling and getting a first down. But there, he made the wise call. If there's nothing downfield, just throw it away. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. Pulled in at the 24. A seven-yard return following a punt of 45 yards. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. The Chargers offense and Jared Goff set to take over once more. The Charger drive about to get going. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. This to the sideline and over everybody, incomplete. No flags forthcoming, though. Maybe a break there. That looked like a clear throwaway to me. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Here's third and ten. Here's gone. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10.
on play action. Here's Tua. And his throw is going to be incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes. You can read his hands. And you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent. And that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Connects with Kittle underneath. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. Now a play fake. Here's Tug of Iloa. That's pulled in by Brooks. And that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Again, they will throw it with Tug of Iloa. And the Chargers rush is going to get there. Down he goes. Multiple defenders get to him there, and that is the sixth time he's been sacked in this ball game. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational. CD, that is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators and they say a sack is a result of everyone on offense not doing their job? But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing off all game long. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Throwing now is Chugavailoa. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. We're going to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. 42 yards on the punt, just two on the return. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Golf. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. now to throw. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it, and he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Here's Jones on the return. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He'd love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. And now a tough spot here. This is third and ten. Here's Tua. And that will be incomplete. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Here we go. This is fourth down. Now Tua. 
Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Tua. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Throwing Tua. Now a short pass pulled in by Washington. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts. As the clock will stop with a minute six left to go in the game. Well, this defense needing a stop here. Got to have it. Third and nine. Now Tua. Towards the end zone for Brown. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Uh, they took a big shot there for the end zone, and if he finds a way to come up with it, that might be your game winner. But it was not to be. The coverage was good, and it winds up incomplete. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. And that will tie this game here in the final minute of play. We've seen some big kicks in the NFL the last few years, and that one might just rank right up there. And you know you can hear the crowd react, right? But I was focused in on the sideline and watched them absolutely erupt. I don't know how many of them thought that he was actually going to make that kick, but how about how they felt when the ball went over the post? The Chargers offense and running back Kyron Williams getting ready for their next possession. Here's first and ten. And it's hard to believe you can run the ball a whole lot better than he has. The vision, the cutback ability, the acceleration, it's all been on display throughout. Goff now to throw. He'll get this into the hands of Ayu. Here comes second down. Now it's Goff. London holds this one in. The Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock stops with 23 seconds to go in the game. Golf. And this one incomplete. So the clock stopped now with 20 seconds remaining. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Now gone. That's complete. It's Cook. Oh, what a nice tackle there. That will hardly move the needle at all offensively. A very short game. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. And we've got free football. Four quarters done, and we're dead even. We'll have overtime after this timeout. a little teaching moment here overtime rules remind us how this goes partner okay so in the past we had sudden death first team to score wins but no longer now if the team receives the ball scores a touchdown they win the game if they kick a field goal though or don't score the other team gets a possession and after both teams get a possession then we're into sudden death first team to score wins the game so it's the Broncos who are going to get the first shot at things. They'll have it here as we start in overtime. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Denver's offense now set to go. All set up for him right now, Charles. Opening possession of overtime. They've got the football. They also obviously have this home crowd behind them in a big way. They give that extra energy from them, but they've got to be careful not to let that adrenaline get away from them and play too fast or create errors of their own making. Use that energy, embrace it, but make sure they channel it the right way. They've got a chance to go downfield, score a touchdown, and end this game. We'll play only the one overtime here. If time runs out, it'll be a tie as they come up on second down. Going to the air, Tonga Bailoa. Open man is Atwell complete. And he is going to lose yardage here. They go backwards there two yards, and second and one is now third and three. 
Off a of play action. Tonga by Loa. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. It's Jervon Dexter who got in to drop him. Offensively, they're going to have to figure this out before next week. Seven sacks in one game. Yeah, and that's more than any quarterback should have to bear. And if this continues on, there will be another quarterback in the game because no one can stand up to this week after week. Here's A.J. Cole now on for a very important punt here in overtime. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. Now their defense did the job, got off the field without giving up any points. And now, Charles, all they need here is a field goal and they get the victory. Yeah, and this is the way I love overtime. I'm one of those really, really old school guys that like sudden death right from the beginning. But we've got it now because any points wins the game. On defense, get a safety, a pick six, fumble return. You can win it as well. So I'm really looking forward to this series and see how both sides play it. His throw here is incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. On third down, here's Williams. That's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. And it appears we have a charger shaken up on that last play. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Joe, a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 48-yard line. Back to the ground, this time Cook. And a strong run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 35. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. They run again on first down. Cook. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a really nice, tough run inside. And they gained five yards on it. And be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. His first catch, and it's a big one in overtime. It's a first down. To throw is gone. Able to hook up with Williams here on the out route. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds right around the 7. Next score wins, but remember this will be a tie if the period ends with no scoring as they work on second down. And he is in for the score! And it is absolute stun silence here as they win it on the road in overtime. So it's a win here for the L.A. Chargers. And the guy who spearheaded things was their quarterback, and that's Jared Goff. Yeah, I thought this defense just didn't have an answer for him all game long. They tried to change things up, but he was always one step ahead. And he finished with over 300 yards passing and two touchdown passes as well. So for L.A., they move back over 500 at 3-2 and two now on the year. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Arizona to take on the Cardinals. Meanwhile, for Denver, the loss will drop them to 4-2 and two on the year. And they'll try to turn things around next week as they have a matchup in New Orleans against the Saints. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.